Okay. Uh, I'm David Spear. I'm a photographer, and I have worked for a period of time. Um, my interest in photography has moved from early days when I was considering single images to groups of pictures and ideas and working on longer term projects. Um, the photograph here is entitled Waiting for the Tide. And it was one of those pictures that as I was learning about the moment in photography, about how a single moment can kind of capture something, um, I was visiting in San Francisco and I was literally walking the streets looking for um, things to photograph and I walked by this laundromat and I saw this person standing there. And I, did, I saw them through the glass of the door frame. And I walked by and then for some reason that image of the person standing the way they were almost draped as they might be um, some wet laundry. Um, that image stayed in my mind and I said I've got to go back and I had made it a half block past that spot and I turned right around and went back and luckily that person was standing in that same position. Um, sort of draped in the middle of that waiting for their laundry to be done and also just the the body language and the way that that person was hanging in that frame was really what attracted me visually. And I mean what the picture I mean you might you might recognize it as a laundromat or you might not but as much as as much as anything else it it's in some ways a lonely picture to me. This person sort of seems like they're alone in this big space and um, but on another level, they seem to be comfortable um, in terms of the way they're standing and kind of waiting. Um, that idea of waiting, I think, is something in our culture that's, that we're become familiar with. We have to wait on the line to go to the movies. We have to wait here and wait there. We have to wait in the doctor's office. We have to wait in the, um, it, it's just in different places for different appointments. And then somehow that picture resonates in that way for me as well. Um, one of the things that pops into my mind is that um, after I made this photograph, I moved to New York City and um, living in a small space, I had to um, go and do my laundry at a laundromat. And in fact, the people in the background who were sort of out of focus in the image in a lot of ways, the, the man that's sort of closest to the camera that's out of focus back there reminds me of, I remember going through those motions and gestures of filling the laundry, filling up the the washer and trying to count out my coins and making sure I had enough and kind of getting ready to do that. So that I actually thought about this image and had remembered the smell of that laundry um, from that time and then made that connection to the smell of, of detergent and the smell of the steam of hot water when, when you open it up first and you're getting ready to dry, to dry your clothing. Um, those are some of the recollections I have of it. Um, also there's something about the idea of um, how he's in focus and they're out of focus and there's something about that that, um, that the back part of the image in some ways isn't as real as the front part of the picture. So there's this sort of dream aspect. When I, when I dream, I dream out of focus more than I do um, when I'm sort of walking around in the world. So um, there are two aspects to that photograph I think that for me are about the sharpness of reality and in some ways about the out of focus of how I might imagine something to be. You know, I think photography has the, the ability to um, allow you to sort of see what's in front of you, but also to imagine what might be behind. So you're sort of looking, you don't really have a, the perspective that I had when I was looking from the outside of this window inside, but there is something about the idea of, okay, this was in front of me, what else is around me and what's behind me? Um, to some degree, it would be really interesting to turn that person around and maybe see what, they, what their face looks like. We have a sense of who they are in terms of the way he is in the pictures. It looks like an older person, his, the way his body language is, but then it would be a whole different story if we were photographing the other way around. And I think that the idea that that perspective of either side going back and forth in many ways is, is the magic of a photograph. What it allows us to do is to imagine what that is. You know, what, what's going on in front of this guy? Is he waiting for laundry? Is he sad on that day because something tragic has happened? Or is he just being really patient? Um, the, the question also leaves it, does he have a kind face? Does he have an um, angry face? Is he a happy person or not a happy person? Um, and I think that not all of that stuff is said in the photograph, but if we sort of look at it and it's a picture that attracts us, we can go to an image like that 
with those kinds of questions. And we may not get the answers, but it allows us to sort of be engaged in the process of thinking about those kinds of things. And I think a strong photograph does that. So you get, uh, fight the compulsion to go tap him on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's another idea, too. I mean, like, what would happen? How would the photograph be different also if he happened to turn around and see me with my camera? So there's that connection, too, the idea that I decided from that vantage point that that was the moment that I wanted. But uh, another photographer may have decided that they wanted to have that reaction. I just made that one photograph and then decided for that moment that I wanted to leave that person in that setting and the way it was. And as a photographer, I had to cross my fingers and hope that I had the feeling that I had when I looked through the, the front door window there. That's a very, it's a very good photo. Thanks. I'm done. All right, thank you very much. Great. Thank you.